for hundreds, nay thousands, nay, nay tens of thousands of years, people have come to me in search of what they desire most. Few find what they are looking for, even fewer ever leave. Welcome to the cave. Yes, I'm a talking cave. Um, okay, so kind of before we began, just uh, a couple of little things. Um, you know, with the cave, there were really, you know, three kind of, three things are really important to me, kind of, you know, about this game and, you know, starting to design it and, and whatnot. And the first was I really, you know, I wanted to kind of look at adventure games and what, you know, what made adventure games a lot of fun and, you know, what was, you know, kind of cruft that maybe, you know, could be cut away. And the and, uh, first thing that occurred to me were uh, was inventory. Seems like inventory had, you know, kind of gotten a little bit out of control with adventure games. You know, people walking around with hundreds and hundreds of things. And it was also a little bit of a crutch for designers because they could just throw something in this large inventory and, you know, obscure it from the player. Uh, and the other thing that I wanted to look at uh, with this game was just traversal in adventure games. Sometimes, you know, adventure games to me, when I was playing them, uh, could get a little bit boring. I was just walking from one place to another. So, uh, you know, that's why in the cave we added this just very, very light platforming that goes on. So when you're walking from one place to another, you know, it's a lot of fun. You know, you're kind of running, there's a little bit of jumping, maybe you're climbing up some ropes. And it's just to kind of, you know, keep both parts of your brain occupied, you know, when you're playing the game. And then the third thing that I wanted to do was, you know, I'd always liked, you know, what uh, Gary and I had done in Maniac Mansion with uh, having seven characters mm -hmm. and, you know, being able to choose, uh, you know, three of them. But, you know, I, I don't know that we did that the best way that we could. And so with the cave, I kind of wanted to relook at that and, you know, kind of re-examine that seven, you know, choosing the seven characters. So in the cave, uh, you do get to choose from seven characters and you mm -hmm. choose any three. But each of the characters, they have their own, their own story, their own reason for being in the cave, and they have their own uh, you know, special skill. It's like one thing that they can do that none of the other uh, characters can do. So those are kind of the three main things that I wanted to you know, really look at uh, you know, with designing the cave. So uh, in this demo, now we're about halfway through the game at this right. point. We would have already chosen our three characters, and we would have chosen the scientist and the hillbilly and the twins. So uh, let's just take the scientist and let's uh, move her through. Now you notice when she fell off that and died, the game didn't end. We didn't have to go back to a save game. We weren't reset, you know, an hour back in our play. It was just like five seconds you know, that we got set back. And, uh, I mean, the game itself didn't even reset. It's just that she, you know, the cave, uh, you know, really wants everybody to make it through. So the cave just kind of resurrected her just a few seconds back. Because I wanted to, you know, I've always felt that death in adventure games was not something that you should really do. Um, but I wanted to have death in this just because they were going down this cave. But I wanted it to be, you know, something that wasn't, you know, it wasn't a negative thing, uh, really. So when we go on. So now we'll switch to the twins, and we'll have the twins hang on that rope, and then we'll switch back to the scientist. Now, these things that you find all throughout the cave, we call them cave paintings. And uh, we tell a lot of the backstory of the characters through these, these cave paintings. So there's a whole lot of these, and every character uh, has them, and you'll you know, discover them. Kind of learn about who the characters are, why they're in the cave, you know, what is that kind of dark you know, that dark place in, uh, in, in their hearts. So why don't we go on? So we'll get the twins to jump off that rope and get that thing up. Of course, they also die. So uh, we'll switch back to the scientist and there's this little metal box there. So let's pull that out, see if we can break the fall of the twins. So now we'll switch to the twins and uh, create broke them fall so they can get down. So we'll move them on and uh, now we'll switch back to the hillbilly and we'll take him down as well. Now the game is also, uh, you know, 
co-op multiplayer. So if there was a second person, uh, you know, two people could be controlling the characters, or if there were three, you could have three people, you know, all controlling the characters uh, at the same time. So let's kind of jump on down, and we'll head on down through the cave, see what we can find. Now you notice at this point, uh, we were controlling the scientist but uh, the hillbilly and the twins caught up with us automatically. So, you know, what we've kind of done is uh, we've tried to be really smart about just about gathering up the characters. So there's not a lot of uh, busy work of taking characters and moving, you know, first the scientist and then the twins and, you know, through the cave. So when you know, we realize you've gotten too far apart and there really isn't anything to do, you know, we kind of, you know, rally all the characters together, uh, which, you know, is what happened here. So we'll move on a little bit farther with the scientist. Now this area we're getting into right here, um, you know, the characters in addition to having their own stories and uh, their own special skills, uh, the characters also have um, you know, entire areas of the cave that are themed for them. And this area that we're starting to see right here uh, is themed for the night. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't have the night in our party, so we really can't, you know, we can't really get into this area and explore it. So, you know, hopefully as players are playing the game, you know, they'll see all this stuff and then you know, want to play the game again uh, to be able to get into this and, and play this part of the cave. So let's kind of keep going with the scientist. Uh, running through the cave and again you see the characters caught up with us because we were getting a little too far apart so let's could just go ahead and jump off that seems like there's water down below so mm, that sweet smell of cotton candy and roller coaster vomit can mean only one thing the carnival is in town and you know what these three would love even more than going to the carnival sneaking into the carnival Oh, come on, there's no shame in it, really. It's a victimless crime, unlike the crime about to be committed by someone who shall remain nameless. But it rhymes with Bill Haley. All right, so let's take the twins and let's see if we can sneak into the carnival. We've got this little uh, underwater passage that we'll take the twins through. Now you notice the twins really can't hold their breath long enough, so uh, you know they kind of died in that water. So we'll switch to the hillbilly, and like I said earlier, each of the characters has you know a special uh, skill that they have. And for the hillbilly, he has the ability to hold his breath. So we'll go ahead and uh, hold the hillbilly's breath there, and we set a little bubble around his head. So now we can swim him uh, down in the water. So we can use the hillbilly's uh, ability to kind of, you know, get to areas of the cave that, you know, some of the, the other characters wouldn't be able to get to. But what if I do not have the hillbilly in my party at this moment? If you don't have the hillbilly, you wouldn't be able to get into the carnival. Okay. It's the same way with the knight. Uh, since we didn't have the knight, we were not able to get into this mm -hmm. whole medieval castle, you know, that we would have found down there. Um, so there's this little uh, blockade of rocks here, which are keeping everyone else from getting in. But there's this handy uh, crate of dynamite there. So let's go ahead and grab uh, grab some of the dynamite. We'll go ahead and light that and uh, drop that, and then we'll stand a safe distance away. Well, <laughs> safer distance away. <laughs> so let's uh, go ahead and grab the scientist. We'll head her in. Uh, let's switch to the hillbilly and let's take him down uh, into the carnival. Ooh, there she is, the amazing two-legged lady. You know the hillbilly carries a torch for her. Uh, if only she would finally notice him, make it merry, and live happily ever after with a house full of little Bill Hillies. So we found this whole, uh, you know, underground carnival in the cave, and then, you know, the one of the the reasons the hillbilly is here is he's looking for love. You know, he's fallen in love with this, uh, you know, carnival freak, the amazing two-legged lady, and uh, you know, he really wants to win uh, win her love. So that's kind of why he's here tonight. So let's kind of keep keep exploring a little bit. The pink bear hanging in that prize booth looks remarkably like what the amazing two-legged lady desires most. Perhaps the hillbilly can win enough tickets to buy it for her. Then this adorable <clears throat> story can have its happy ending. So it looks like we need five tickets uh, to win that bear. So let's uh, head on into the carnival and see what we can find. Uh, there's a little kid eating some cotton candy. He looks like he has a ticket, so let's just go ahead and grab that. I don't think you'll miss it. And uh, we'll go ahead and put that into the ticket machine. So now we only need four tickets. 
And uh, looks like the kid actually is now crying. <laughs> So um, this is, you know, pretty much just kind of a, you know, an introduction, and you see the characters, you know, all kind of caught up again, you know, as we moved, uh, as we move through. And there's like a weight guessing machine. Um, and if we grab that little mallet and try to use the weight guessing machine, it's like we really don't have enough strength uh, to get that ticket. You know, so that's a puzzle that we're going to have to solve um, about that. Uh, there's a dunking booth. Let's put the hillbilly on that and uh, switch over to the scientist, and uh, we'll kind of move her over and uh, we'll push that thing in, kind of dunk the hillbilly. We did get a ticket for that, so we did get a second ticket uh, for that. And uh, this is another uh, cave painting that we would have found. So we can kind of look at that. And this is a cave painting for the twins. So we're kind of learning a little bit about the twins and uh, who they are. There's the uh, man of ordinary strength and the uh, big giant Ferris wheel. So let's go ahead and jump on that Ferris wheel. The cave has a Ferris wheel. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's another uh, set of cave paintings there. These are uh, for the scientist. So there's a fuse. So let's go ahead and jump off the Ferris wheel and uh, let's try to pick up that fuse, that sparking fuse. Uh, so it's kind of electrocuted us, mm -hmm. so uh, we can't really get that fuse out. So again, that's kind of another puzzle we need to solve, is how do we get that fuse. Let's just kind of run through a little bit more. The twins. There's the uh, exotic clothed dancers. Um, there, you know, there's a big giant sledgehammer uh, behind uh, this little group of carnies, and maybe we could use that sledgehammer to, you know, to, to win the uh, strength. Uh, strength machine, but the carnies are guarding the sledgehammer, so there's really no way we can get at the sledgehammer. So again, it's just kind of another puzzle we'll need to solve to figure out how to get uh, how to get the sledgehammer. So that's pretty much it. It's kind of a quick tour of this little area of the carnival, which is you know really themed about around the hillbilly and his story and uh, and all of that. There's so many ideas in so little space. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, you know, and this is just, you know, one, you know, one of many, many areas uh, in the game that you get to go to. How long would you think would a normal thinking man need to solve all the puzzles? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know exactly how long it takes. I know that when I'm playing the game, uh, when I'm, you know, testing it, I can speed run three characters through the entire game in about four and a half hours. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, that's knowing exactly where to go. It's knowing the solution to every single puzzle. It's knowing just the right characters to take because, you know, they, their abilities allow them to get through through things faster. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how long it would really mm. take anybody to mm. get through the whole thing. But um, you can never um, see the whole game with one group, right? You have Correct. To yeah, you have to play the game, you know, a second, or, you know, maybe a third, or mm -hmm. maybe even a fourth time, mm -hmm. you know, depending on who you choose to, to see absolutely everything. But, you know, the difference is as you play through with one set versus another set, um, it's not just, you know, small little differences. I mean, there are entire areas. Like, there's this entire medieval castle buried mm -hmm. in the cave, and we just haven't seen any of that because we don't have the night. If we had the night, we could get into there and you know solve a whole lot of adventure game puzzles. You know, in the castle, having to deal with the night story. The scientists, there's a you know giant underground missile silo uh, down there. Um, you know, the monk, you find this uh, you know uh, you know monk temple on the top of this you know giant mountain buried mm -hmm. down inside the cave. So just a lot of uh, you know a lot of interesting areas uh, mm -hmm. to go to. So there's a mountain in the cave. There's a mountain in the cave. Well, there's a Ferris wheel in the cave. <laughs> yeah, so why not a mountain. There's yeah. a missile down in the cave. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> so there, there, there are no dead ends like in uh, Manic Mansion. There are no uh, dead ends now. Okay. At least not that I know yeah. of. <laughs> <laughs> At the very beginning of the game, uh, there is there is a point. There's probably like around a, a maybe ten or fifteen minute period at the very beginning of the game when mm -hmm. you can switch between all seven characters. Mm -hmm. But then there's a you know kind of point of no return mm -hmm. where you've really kind of chosen those three and those three you know get trapped in the cave, uh, and and at that point you cannot switch back mm -hmm. out to the other ones. You can only switch between these three. Mm -hmm. But how do you realize if I'm in a certain area and um, I'm stuck? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if I'm stuck because I have the wrong people with me. 
and not because I'm too stupid for the, <laughs> for the puzzle. <laughs> we, you know, we tried to make it very clear uh, of the different themed areas. Like you come across this medieval castle and yeah, you can't really get into it. And you may think, well, maybe there's a puzzle to get into it, but you know, it should be strongly enough themed that it's a medieval castle and you realize you don't have the knight. Mm -hmm. So we tried to do that um, with all of the characters and also make it fairly clear that you really can't get in here just because of you know, the nature of the puzzle that we can have you solve to get into the mm -hmm. area. So um, you know, that was something that we thought about a lot mm -hmm. was, to, was to make that, um, make that clear as well. Uh, Thank you. Uh, any sort of, uh, active dialogue, a dialogue system, anything like that? No, there's no dialogue system in the game, you know, like there was in, uh, you know, Monkey Island or Indiana Jones or, you know, any of those games. Uh, the characters uh, in the cave, they don't, they don't actually talk. Uh, the cave talks, and as you saw, you know, some of the other characters, like, you know, the people in the carnival and stuff, they talk, but the, char the characters, the seven characters themselves um, do not talk. So you're not actively progressing the story, you're basically moving just through the cave and experiencing the story along. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, and the backstory is told through the cave paintings and, you know, the events that you're doing are kind of help telling the story and stuff, but, um, but I, I just didn't want to do dialogue for the characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there are puzzles that involve you know two or even three players, mm -hmm. you know to or three characters. Um, mm -hmm. You can all be done with one player, but with three characters to you know solve puzzles, uh, you know get things going. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we do we do we do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. That was one of the fun things I liked about Maniac Mansion. Mm -hmm. You know, as we had some puzzles where mm -hmm. you had to get somebody here to. Uh, you know, turn off the lights and somebody else over here to do this and get somebody and that, those, killed in the pool. Those, yeah, get somebody killed in the pool. That was, yeah, that was fun. That's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do it on purpose here, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you just do it all you want here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation.